if you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for money to fund your deals, regardless of your credit, regardless of your income, regardless of your experience, well, you are on the right show. Welcome to the Jay Connor Show. My name is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, coming to you from Eastern North Carolina. And my co-host that I love to have here on the show with me is Chaffee Wynn. Hey, Chaffee. Hey, Jay. How you doing? Fantastic. How you doing up there in Chicago today? Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, well, folks, in case you on again, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Always glad to have you on. So let's tell our listeners and viewers what this show is about in case this is the first time they've tuned in here on the Jay Connor show. Here's what we, uh, what we do is we talk about all things, real estate investing, particularly in the realm of single family houses. We talk about how to find them before other real estate investors know they exist. We talk about how to get them funded. As I just mentioned, how to fund them, regardless of your credit, your income, your experience, et cetera. And in fact, everybody, in just a moment, we're going to plug you into the money as to how you can actually get all the funding you want for your deals. So we're going to get that out in just a moment. So we talk about finding, funding, how to sell houses very, very quickly, as in three days or less. So you're not stuck holding any in, uh, investment properties. And we also talk about how to automate the business. So if you've got any kind of um, interest in real estate investing, you are at the right place. We talk about commercial deals as well. And another thing that you know we always include as part of the show is personal development and mindset. And Chaffee, you have been uh, coaching uh, business owners. You've been coaching individuals for a very, very long time on how to get to the next level, how to uh, you know get out of their own way. So talk for a moment about uh, the personal mindset and what we talk about. Well, again, you know you can give a hundred people a checklist of exactly what to do and how to do it. And out of the hundred people, ninety percent of the people won't even do it, won't even get through the checklist. Uh, you know you'll have a ten percent success rate of people actually doing the checklist, and then of the ten percent, even a smaller amount will actually. Uh, achieve the results that they're looking for. So, you know, why is it that everyone has the same checklist, except there's only 10% or less of the people that are successful? And the reality is, is because a lot of people give up, a lot of people face challenges and uh, hit brick walls. And instead of fighting through it and working through it and having the right mindset to achieve success, they just quit. And so that's where I come in. That's where you come in, Jay. That's what we do is we like to work with those individuals to make sure that they have the right mindset to keep pushing forward until they get to, to, to that success level and beyond. So, Exactly. And so with that, uh, Chad, I'm just going to remind everybody, the viewers and listeners, that uh, at the end of each show, uh, I turn it over to you to give the, uh, the nugget of the day or the strategy of this show as to how, uh, how people can actually move forward from a mindset standpoint. So don't let me forget to do that with you, Chaffee. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and plug them into the money that, that we promised. And so here's what the deal is, folks. In just a few short weeks, in fact, uh, when you're watching, you may be watching a replay here. Oh, of course, you're watching a replay. But when you're, when you're actually viewing or listening to this podcast, what I'm getting ready to say may be as short as a few days away. OK, so what we're doing here on the Jay Connor show is we're giving away three thousand dollar live event ticket as a thank you to being a new listener to the show since since we've launched the podcast. So at this live event, in fact, I'll just go and give you the website right now and, and we'll put it right here on the screen. And that is go to jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast, all one word, money podcast. And here's what's going to happen at the live event. This is a $3,000 valued event. And we talk about, well, that's where I'm going to plug you into the money. I have private lenders funding coming there at the event where you get to network with the private lenders. And again, this has got nothing to do with your credit, your income, your verification of income, your experience. And I don't know another event like this. 
Chaffee, of course, you're at all my live events. And why don't you take a moment and just review the overview of what we do at those live events? Well, the live events are, I mean, they're they're phenomenal. You, you don't get this experience, I don't think, anywhere else. And and one of the great things, well, there's a couple great things about the uh, live event that I want to highlight. First and foremost is that we actually do a bus tour at the live event. And that's actually looking at your properties. So we're not looking at some properties we just found off the MLS that we're prospecting or anything. We're looking at your properties where the student gets to walk through ask questions about what you, you know, if it's a finished property that you, that we're going through, they get to see what you actually did and ask questions about how you did it. If it's a property that you're just starting, that you just purchased, you actually ask for feedback about what should be done and you have a discussion there. So it's very immersive, but it's very interactive in that sense. As you said, you have your private lenders there that are available to ask questions to they're they're not there to lend money to all the students only they're there to answer the questions of how how did you jay find this private lender how did you jay you know talk me as a private lender into lending money to you and so to have those private lenders there in a panel and have the students ask those questions live so that they can go back then to their warm market or their network and ask and find private lenders that's you know again very powerful and then the third thing is that you also bring a lot of your staff members that work on your properties, that work on the acquisition side, that work on the sales side to the live event as well. So that not only do the students, again, get to ask how you found them, how you work with them and what they do. And, you know, they get to see the beginning of the real estate process all the way to the end and the whole automated piece of it with all of your staff members and your business functioning. So. Again, it's, it is a window into how to run a business like Jay Connor, where it's automated, systemized, and operational so that you can go in and enjoy your life. <laughs> so Exactly. You can't beat the price on this. I mean, it's virtually free. I mean, that's a $3,000 event for a $97 registration fee, which is crazy, unheard of. So we have these events right here in Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach, North Carolina, so, yes, you are probably going to have to get on an airplane to get here. Or if you're around the three or four state area, you could drive in. But I tell you, it would be the best airplane ticket that you ever purchased if you're remotely interested in, in the real estate investing business. Even if you are a seasoned real estate investor, who doesn't always want more funding for their deals? So, you know, we dive deep on finding the deals before other real estate investors know they exist, how to sell them fast, how to automate the business. And I'll tell you something that I absolutely love about our events that we do, Chappie, is you are there. We have highly trained, certified mindset coaches, real estate investing coaches that sit down with the attendees and do free one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions. Take just one more moment before we dive into today's content on the show about the benefit and what happens during those one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions, which by the way, folks, we do not charge for. So, so let me clarify. They're free to the student or to the attendee. They're not free to you, Jay, because you're paying. <laughs> <laughs> you're <not> <laughs> yes, I, I promise you, uh, folks, uh, Chaffee is not paying his airplane fare. He's not paying his hotel room or food. No, that, that comes out of my pocket as a, a benefit to my attendees. So the, the coaches that are there are, uh, let, let's say, well-paid and compensated. And Jay has compensated them as a benefit to the attendees. And, and so what, what uh, we do in these sessions is really we focus on you and your business. So whatever challenges you're at, uh, you're having, where you're at, wherever you're at in your business, whether you're new or you've been investing, all the coaches are not only trained in real estate and are real estate investors, they are also trained in personal development, mindset mastery, and uh, subconscious reprogramming as well. So we're there to help you put together a strategy to move your business forward and really get to that next level using the things that you're going to learn at the three-day boot camp with, with Jay. Exactly. So again, that's Jay Connor with an E-R, jayconnor.com forward slash money podcast. All right, Chevy, let's go ahead and dive in. What are we talking about on today's show? Jay, today we are uh, talking about bandit signs, these things that uh, you see all over the place and you really don't know what they're about. So you're going to explain it to everybody today. 
<laughs> excellent, excellent. Yes, you know, bandit signs, and if you don't know what a bandit sign is and you've never, you know, bought your first or invested in your first deal, you've seen them, okay? Some people call them road signs. Some call them yard signs, et cetera. So really what we're doing here, Chaffee, is we're doing a series or what I, I say what we're doing, what I want to do is I want to do, I just didn't know we were starting it on this show, okay? So what we, what I want to do is do a series of podcasts, at least three, at least three shows titled, you know, Guerrilla Marketing, Finding Deals on a Budget, Finding Deals on a Budget. So you've chosen, we're going to talk about bandit signs. Yep. Well, I could go on a rant. <laughs> I've been using bandit signs for 15 years. So why don't we do it this way, Chavi? Why don't you just field me some questions and I'll just I'll just speak from my heart and my experience of 15 years on um, how the bandit sign campaign works. Well, so, you know, I guess my first question, Jay, I'm going to throw this out to you is that, you know, but I personally love bandit signs. When I got started in real estate way back in the day, 2002, it was one of my most effective marketing methods was the bandit signs. Why do you use bandit signs? First of all, Jay, what, I mean, why, why do you, why are we talking about bandit signs? Why do you like them? Why do you use them? And, and do you know, just on a high level, what kind of results have you gotten from using bandit signs? Sure. So first of all, let's remind before I give results, let's remind all the viewers and listeners as to what market I'm in. Okay. I'm a very small market. Very small market. My total target market for for looking for real estate investors is only 40,000 people. So, you know, most real estate investors are going to be in like a 100,000 market and on up into the millions. All right. If they're in a, in a big city. So what I'm about ready to say, keep that in mind, everybody, as to, oh, these are the results. All right. So. When I do, a, and by the way, these bandit signs were looking for motivated sellers. Now, let me say this, not to get the cart before the horse. I use bandit signs looking for buyers. Okay. Bandit signs look work fantastic for buyers. In fact, that should be one of our shows, Chaffee. We should, because <laughs> it's, it's a different, I mean, it's very, very similar, but of course it's a, it's a different audience. All right. Absolutely. In fact, this very weekend, I mean, I'm, I've been doing it 15 years. This weekend, I've got 50 signs going out on automatic. We'll talk about that, that in a moment. All right. I'm not putting them out. Okay. And so it's like, it's like a statistical thing. Now, results are better, but not that big of a difference. But results are better in the summertime whether you're looking for sellers or buyers. So that's when people are, you know, like they're thinking about moving, you know? Yeah. So it's like clockwork. It's like clockwork. I put out 50 bandit signs, road signs, and I get back. Of course, this is in a very compressed time period, but it's like I get around 30 motivated sellers responding to my 50 signs. So why do I do it? The same reason, one is the same reason you just said. Number one, I, it's the highest response rate of anything that I do. When I say highest response rate, I'm talking about cost per lead and cost per conversion. So we can sort of back into that cost per lead and cost per, per conversion. What I mean, of course, and you know what I'm talking about, Chavi, is cost per conversion is how much did I have to put out mm -hmm. to buy a house? So, folks, my average profit here in this area is $67,000 a deal. So as we talk about this, you know, you want to ask yourself the question, how much money would I invest to make $67,000? Okay. So the results answer the question, 50 bandit signs, I'm going to get 30 motivated sellers. Why do I do it? Number one is it's the best results money-wise. But secondly, if you want like a shot, I mean like really, really fast, really fast, 
you know, I'll get more leads this weekend from my business than all my other marketing will have given me over the past two weeks. And uh, let me just add to that, Jay, is that actually I, I'm in Chicago or the Chicagoland area, and we have over 8 million people in the metropolitan Chicagoland area. And bandit stands are still my favorite method of getting leads. So <laughs> whether you're right. in the 40,000, right, a neighborhood yep. or, you know, the 8 million, it's just a matter of using them right and using them the right way. So let's dive into that a little bit. And first and foremost, let me just ask you, you know, what do you put on the bandit signs? When you order the bandit signs, what, what do you have it say? And, you know, what information is out there? Right, exactly. So my bandit sign for looking for motivated sellers has basically got three lines. All right. The top line, and this is hey, this is not rocket science, folks. I mean, you know, if you if you live in any size area, you have seen these signs. Now, I've got a little I've got a little nuance that I have on my signs that I don't see on most other signs. So at the top, I say I buy houses. Now I like I buy houses better than we buy houses because the we is like, okay, is this a, a mom and pop operation? Is this a company? Whatever. The I, the I is much more, you know, me to you kind of thing. So I buy houses. All right. So I buy houses top line. All right. Next line says all areas slash prices. Okay. All areas slash prices. Next line says any condition, any condition. All right. Then the next line, which is very important, is a local phone number, not an 800 number. 800 number already sounds like a, a company or whatever that's off yonder. So it's a local number. And if you think of it, Chaffee, when we get down the road here in the next few minutes, let's talk about who's answering that phone call. Okay. That's what it says. Oh, now let me let me go and share this while I'm thinking about it. My favorite, and I want to know what your favorite color is, Chevy, because you've been a real estate investor forever as well. My favorite is a bright, you know, the, the back is a white, excuse me, canary yellow with black print. Canary yellow with black, oh, both sides, print both sides of the sign. And I want what's called vertical corrugated. I want a vertical corrugated sign, which means, and, and they're 18 by 24 inches in, in, in um, size. 18 by 24 inches and they're vertical corrugated, which, which means you can put those metal stakes that are shaped like an H right. <laughs> yep. and, 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 and stick in the dirt or, you know, you can nail them to the telephone pole if you wanted to, but my favorite is canary yellow with black print. I also like white with a Royal blue print and I like white with red print. In fact, this weekend, this campaign is white with red print because Nobody else around here has used white with red print. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite color is the same uh, as your your first one, which is the canary yellow with the black. And that's that's what I've always used. And that's yeah. always worked for me. So now I just thought of this. I've got to say it before it slips. Very important, Chaffee. Very important. When I started out in this business, I got these signs printed pretty. All right. Nice, you know, lettering, bold, blah, blah, blah. And it took me a few years for somebody to finally convince me that ugly sells, S-E-L-L-S, ugly sells, the teenagers to actually handwrite with, you know, black magic marker on the sign, double-sided. Well, I actually finally found... And I know you're going to ask me my resource, which I really don't want to give out. But anyway, I will. So I find a resource that does an excellent job, excellent job having a handwritten font that's legible and ugly. So you and don't I, have to do I, it yourself. I want to stress the key there that you said it's legible, right? Because I've legible. seen some really ugly signs that I just... I, you know, I'm unable to read. So right. you, that's not, that's a waste of time and money for you to put out a sign that no one can read. So, exactly. exactly. Uh, so, you know, while you're on it, Jay, let's, let's hear that resource. You brought okay, it up. So. <laughs> Throw it out. 
<laughs> so it's sort of a strange website. Okay. This is Christy, Christy King. She's down in uh, Florida, provides excellent service. I get all my bandit signs from her. In fact, the bandit sign campaign that we're putting out this weekend, she did the signs. And so her, her name is Christy King. The name of her website is yellowletterlady.com. Yellow. In fact, we can put it right there on the screen uh, when we uh, edit the uh, recording here, yellowletterlady.com. So the reason that's her website is because she actually, you know, prints yellow letters, <laughs> which we need to talk about yellow letters sometimes. Oh, we already have. We already have talked about yellow, but we're talking about them again. But anyway, so she provides, she can print any kind of signage, any kind of banners or whatever. And I've been using her for years. Service is great. Pricing is fantastic. So that's where I get them. Awesome. So let's go move on to the next question then, Jay, which is where do you put them? When do you put them out? When do you pick them up? And I know what everyone's thinking, which is how do you avoid the local authorities? So, so it's kind let of me like start a multi-part with, question there for you. All right, so let me start with when and where. When and where. All right. So when. So we don't put, I don't have signs put out and just leave them there. Okay. Dan Kennedy, one of the most brilliant marketing brains I have ever known on the planet. He says, if you really want to get results and get results fast, take massive action in a very compressed period of time. Okay. That's whether you're doing an open house to have people come in to buy your houses. You know, we'll talk about that sometime. My open houses last one hour and I'll drive 30 or 40 people in there. So what we do is we put them out after five o'clock on Fridays. After five o'clock p.m. on Fridays, and then we pick them up after five p.m. on Sundays. Now we do that for a couple of reasons. So when these signs are going out, so I gave instructions just this week to this husband and wife team that are putting them out. Carol, Joy, and I aren't putting them out. Okay, the team is putting them out, and so I told them exactly what intersections where I want them put. And so they'll take them out after five. They go pick them up. Of course, some will disappear. No problem. All right. So that's when we put them out. Now, the second reason I put them out after five on Friday and pick them up after five on Sunday is number one, people driving in my target market, they're going to see my signs everywhere. Everywhere. That's my, that's my massive action. And boom. They're not going to be there. And then boom, they're going to be there. And then they're going to be gone. You know, it's like the circus came to town and the circus left. Right. So the other reason on the weekend is because I want to, and you asked me this on the authority, I want to stay friends with the local authorities. Right. So this is, this is market specific, Chaffee, market specific. You know, you're in Chicago. You probably got areas that are in the city, in the city limits, that people put out signs and they leave them and they don't touch them and they just go replace them. And the local authorities may have zoning against it, but they could care less because they can't control them. There's millions of people putting out bandit signs, right? They're everywhere. Uh -huh. It's part, it's part of the culture. All right. <laughs> only in certain parts, <laughs> yeah, only in certain parts, but in my area, it's not part of the culture. It's like very rare. Do you ever see? A bandit sign. So I learned the hard way what to do and what not to do, right? Best way to learn something is go do it, right? Right. So I learned in Moorhead City, in the city limits, and in my adjacent town, Newport, little teeny tiny town, but it's still got a few thousand people. Even on the weekends, you better not be putting no bandit sign in that city limit, even on a Saturday or a Sunday. They will call you on Monday. Ask me how I know, all right? <laughs> but they could care less about outside the, I say outside the city limits. They could care less when it's out there near a Walmart or a shopping center or, you know, a mall or out there where you got all this traffic, right? You're not in neighborhoods, you know, and so We'll put them out there because, and, and so I put them in areas that I've learned to care less. Like we'll put them in the median end of a highway, Chaffee, 
that, you know, leading, and I'm, up to, I'm getting into the where, but what leading up to a stoplight at Walmart, right? So about 20 feet apart, we'll put three coming up to the stoplight. Well, there's two ways to turn into Walmart, right? You're either going eastbound or you're going westbound. And I want, I want the people that are at the stoplight or those that are turning left or right, they're going to see three signs in a row, 20 feet apart. So right there at that intersection, I'll have six signs. So the people that are the jurisdiction or authority for where those signs are going, Chaffee, is the North Carolina Department of Motor Vehicle, I mean, Department of Transportation, NCDOT. They could care less what you do on the weekend because they ain't working. Now, on Monday through Friday, they will stop their orange pickup truck and pick up your signs and haul them away. Saturday and Sunday, they could care less. So you got any comment on that one before I finish? Yeah, so, so you brought up a few things that um, I want to, one, reiterate, and two, ask about uh, is that, so putting them out on Friday and picking them up on Sunday, one of the primary reasons you say you do that is to avoid the local authorities. Or that's, that's, really, not, that's one of the reasons. That's one. one. Reasons, right? What happens, you said they call you. What happens when they call you? Like, you know, are there repercussions or, you know, you going yeah. to bandit sign jail or? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. So they call you up and or here's my experience. They call you up and they say, hey, we got zoning against this. You can't put these signs out. And of course, here's the deal. They're not the phone number on even though it's a local number on the bandit sign. Even though it's a local number there, it's not calling my cell phone number. It's, it's not calling my team's cell phone number. It's going to a live operator answering service. And so when they call, I get this. I'm not, ca I'm not caught off guard. But of course, we're, we're going to return the phone call or I'm not going to ignore it. Right. So we call them up on Monday <laughs> or whenever they've called and we respond to the call. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Get on the phone. We find out, oh, we got zoning against this. You can't put this out. You say, I apologize. Didn't know that this was, you know, within your boundaries and uh, no worries. You won't see my signs anymore. And you don't. You don't. Now, you know, I don't subscribe to this practice. This is not a best practice for me. But since bandit signs are so effective, some real estate investors are willing to pay the fine in order to still get the motivated seller leads, you know, but, you know, I want to get along with my authorities. You know, I, I don't want to pay fines, even if it's a, um, a hefty fine in certain areas. Yeah. Per yeah. Sign. So I've, I've heard of areas charging a hundred dollars per sign. So if you got you go. signs out, you know, that's 5,000 <laughs> bucks, right? Exactly. <laughs> so you gotta, so, you gotta check your local authorities. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But that's, that's why, that's why. Anything else before I answer? Yeah, um, another where? another uh, key thing you pointed out is putting out a lot of signs so that people can see it, right? Because I talk to students all the time and say, hey, you know, I use this bandit sign thing and it didn't work for me. And then I ask them, you know, how many signs you put out? And they said 10, you know, 15, you know, over, you know, a, a five or 10 mile area. And and that that's not the right way of doing it, right, Jay? Correct. I mean, when I'll say massive action, like sometimes we'll go out on the highway, all right, not far from town, and we'll put out like 15 bandit signs on the highway 50 feet apart. So we look like a furniture store, we look like a furniture store going out of business, right? So, yeah, because <laughs> you've seen it, you know? And uh -huh. so now you got all that highway traffic as well. So, yeah, you don't like want one sign at an intersection. Like, you know, I was telling my team a couple of days ago, I said, so when you get to this intersection, you want four signs coming from each direction. All right. So I did learn the hard way. It's not a good idea to put like 10 or 12 at an intersection. You know, that's like way too much. But you don't want just one either. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Um, so. so Go, go ahead, Jay. No, I'm just going to say, um, let me go ahead and answer. Cause my lands, we're almost to the end of the yeah, show. And we got out. more <laughs> to talk about on bandit signs. But where do we put them? Obviously, it's stoplights, stop signs. If you are, if there's an exit ramp coming off the highway at the top of the exit ramp, 
going in and out of highly trafficked shopping centers, the flea mall. If you have a flea mall in your area, there's motivated sellers that go to flea malls. Trust me. <laughs> so any kind of highly trafficked you know, area where you're going to have the opportunity for people to actually stop and actually see your sign. So to wrap up, I, I do have two final questions, which is since we're talking about, you know, doing this on a budget or, you know, strategies on a budget, how much should you be spending to buy the signs, to put the signs out and all that kind of stuff? Now, if you don't have a budget, it's OK to go ahead and do it yourself. It's just going to take more time, right? That's right. So That's right. So I'm paying to do this. Yeah. So I pay. I'm paying the husband and wife team this weekend. I'm paying them. Actually, for this campaign, I'm paying 500 bucks. But typically what I pay, if like if I'm putting out 50 signs, typically what I'll pay is $2 each sign to take it out and, excuse me, $2 each sign to pick it up and bring it back. So that would be $400. I wanted to give a little extra incentive because I didn't give give them much notice. <laughs> so, I'm, so, so here's the deal. On the labor part, 500 bucks. Okay. On on the printing of us and who wouldn't invest five hundred bucks to get back thousands and thousands and thousands? Even if you didn't rehab the house, even if you wholesale the house and you picked up a five or ten thousand dollar assignment fee, not a bad return on five hundred bucks. The printing of the signs is going to depend on you know your vendor, but you know Christy King, depending on the kind of sign you get, uh, etc. You know you're going to be like in that three to four dollar printing on both sides, three to four dollars per sign. So, you know, you'll spend you'll spend a couple hundred bucks, you know, on on 50 signs. But again, if you lost every sign on this weekend's campaign, you're totally in for what, 750 bucks or whatever. And boom, now you got all you got all those leads. My lens chappy, we haven't even talked about what do you do during the campaign. Have mercy. (laughs) <laughs> that, was my, that was the final question because I know we're oh, over time already. So. <laughs> oh, my lands. We are out of time. Make it quick, Jay. <laughs> I'm going to make it quick. So here's the deal. So you do not want to be answering these calls yourself. You want to go to an answering service. All right. Here's another secret nugget I'll give out, Chaffee. What, what service do I use? I use Pat Live, P-A-T, a person's name, P-A-T-L-I-V-E, patlive.com. They're down in Florida. They answer 24 hours a day. You can do recorded messages. You can do have a live operator. I like the live operator because I get to see coming in by email and et cetera. Oh, here's the motivated sellers and how much money they want, et cetera. But this is the big secret, folks. This is the big secret, Chaffee. When that lead comes in, write this down. The older, the colder. The older, the colder. The older, the more time that goes by. Right, right. From the time that person, that motivated seller, dialing that phone number, the harder it will be to negotiate a deal. So you need somebody on your team, if not yourself, getting these folks on the phone immediately after they have called in and starting to build rapport. In fact, we should do a show on how to build rapport on the telephone, Chappie. So (laughs) how to build a rapport, getting the information and start negotiating the deal and if the numbers make sense, get out of the house ASAP. So that's what you do while the campaign's going on. Don't wait till Monday to have your team calling them back. No, they got to be called back now. And not only call them, but you text them. Chaffee, I'm glad we're at the end of questions because since we have time to wrap up, we always wrap up with a personal development mindset nugget. And you are the gold nugget man, Chaffee. What, what nugget have we got for listeners and viewers on mindset? What are we? Uh, you don't have a question for me, Jay? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll throw. Shoot you, I'll, I'll shoot. You, I'll shoot you from the hip. Okay, I'll shoot you from the hip. It's a brand. Let's say I'm a brand new real estate investor. Uh huh. I'm excited, but I'm a little anxious, and I'm getting ready to do my first bandit sign campaign, and I'm scared to death that the phone is going to ring. <laughs> How do I deal with that? Because if I if I stay scared to death, I'm not going to I'm not going to have the signs put out. <laughs> so how do I deal with that fear of, you know, I, I haven't, you know, I may have practiced some. I may have called some for sale by owners on Craigslist, but it's my first time that my phone I know is going to blow up. 
you know, how do I deal with that? Well, first and foremost, that's what you want to happen, right? I mean, <laughs> you want to get in your head, that's what you want to happen. And, you know, there's a saying out there that goes, feel the fear and do it anyway. So how do you overcome a fear is to do it. And the more you do it, the less the fear becomes. The more you know about it, the less the fear becomes. And like I said, that's the end result is that you want your phone to blow up so that you can answer all these calls and uh, find that deal. So uh, that would be my thing is that just don't think about it. Know that this is a strategy that works across the country. And, you know, real estate investors use it everywhere. And so just go put out the signs and see what kind of results that you get. Take massive action, as, as you said uh, with Dan Kennedy, massive action in a short, you know, small area, right? Mm -hmm. Go out yeah. and do it. Yeah. What you just said on take, uh, taking massive action, what that triggered in my brain was the best way. And of course, we learned this from Dale Carnegie. The best way to conquer fear. The best way to overcome fear is to do what you just said. Take action, right? right, right. Put the signs out. That's great. Well, Chaffee, let's ask everybody, as we always do, if you like what you've heard, if you learned something that was meaningful to you, got a new strategy, got a new nugget, got a new tip. If you're on iTunes, please subscribe, rate, and review. Subscribe, rate, and review. And if you're viewing on YouTube, subscribe, put a comment in. We love to know where people are viewing from. So say hello, your first name and wherever you're viewing from. And also comment as well. We love your comments. Chaffee, final parting words before we say Saranara. Yeah, which is get registered for that up upcoming live event, Jay. And how do they do that? How do they yep. uh, get registered? Yep. Yep. So simply go to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast, all in lowercase. And by the way, folks, Chaffee just touched on what we do at the live event, just touched on it. Go to that website and just read all about it. Chaffee, thank you so much for joining me once again on the Jay Connor yeah. Show. And folks, here's to wishing you the very best and seeing you at the next level in your business. Bye for now.